Hello there, this is another look at uh, differential equations, this time trying to find what we um, we call particular solutions. And you remember last time I was looking on exercise 13a, video 13a was all about finding um, uh, general solutions to differential equations. So I've got an example of that here now, and then once we've done that we'll go back to trying to have a look at particular solutions again. But this is just a, re a recap of what we did last time. Now the basic problem of this is, you'll notice, um, we want to get y's on one side, x's on the other, and then we can uh, effectively integrate both sides. Now, at the moment, we've got x's here and a y, and we've got y's over there. So I'm going to pick both of these up and move them over, and I'm going to kind of switch them around. Um, so I want to call that 2 over 3y squared dy, because the 3y squared just goes on the bottom, equals, I think, just x. Now, I could leave the 3 over there. In fact, I will. Let's just prove that you can. I'm going to leave the 3 there. So the 3, the numbers don't matter so much. It's the letters that matter. So it doesn't matter what I do. I can move the 3. I cannot move the 3. The answer will ultimately be the same. And I integrate both sides. Notice the dx was also meant to go up. So I'll move the dx up as well. Um, now, if I integrate this, this is like t um, 2y to the minus 2. So if I add a power, I get minus 1. So this becomes, I think, 2y to the minus 1 over minus 1. Because you always add a power, divide by the power. And that equals 3x squared and add a power, divide by the power. So already I'm thinking to myself, I don't like the y to the minus 1. I don't like the minus 1 on the bottom. So um, I'm going to think of that as minus 2 over y. That's really on the bottom. It's negative power like that. And the minus can move to the top. Um, is 3x squared over 2. Now, usually you'd write y equals, so I'm now tempted to just jig it about a bit. I reckon the 2 goes up there, the 3 goes down there, and that goes up there, so it's a big rewrite, sort of uh, rewriting of it, and I think I get minus 4 th uh, over 3x squared. Now, I can write that as minus 4 as x to the minus 2 if I want, or I can write that as minus 4 over 3x squared. I don't mind which way it's written. And that's right. I don't think I've got an answer for this. So you're going to have to take my word for it. Um, but uh, oh, I nearly made a bad mistake, plus a constant. So uh, let's write it out properly as my final answer. What should I do? Let's write this one. So it's minus 4 over 3x squared plus a constant. And you always get a constant when you don't get what are called initial conditions. Um, you know, I'm not told any information about my con my uh, original curve, so that's as good as uh, I can get. Now, sometimes, though, we do get a bit of information. So you notice here, it just gives me additional information. And when I do get given enough information um, to find what you know, the constant of integration, that's really what we're after, we call this a particular solution. Then. So let's use this here. Um, what do I want to do? Well, I suppose... You've got to think of these in terms of times and divide. So this is going to switch places with this. So it becomes dy. That goes 1 over y plus 2. I showed you that uh, on the last video. dx takes its place. Notice I integrate both sides when I do it. And that becomes log of the bottom, which is y plus 2, equals x plus a constant. And I've even shown you um, that you can write this as y plus 2 equals e to the x plus c. But we prefer to write that as y plus 2 equals a e to the x. And I showed you y last time, but I'll just do it again. It's because e to the x plus c is the same as e to the x times by e to the c. Now effectively what we say is that a is equal to the e to the c. So this is a equals a e to the x. This is what I've written here. Notice I've got one more line to write here. Therefore, y equals a e to the x minus 2. Now, I say one more line. I haven't got it there at all yet. Because what I've got to do now is I substitute this 0 and this 3 in. So again, over here, I'm going to write x equals 0, y is 3. And if that is true, put something those numbers in. I get 3 equals a, what's e to the naught? e to the naught, of course, equals 1. So that disappears. Take away 2. And this tells me that a equals 5. So presumably I can now write y equals 
5 e to the x take away 2 because my a I found there, there it is there's my answer so quite a lot of work to get there but notice I've ended up finding this constant a rather than c that's because it's just the way we wrote it so it's very common to write those with the a at the front rather than the e to the x plus c got another one now notice again we try to times and divide this so this 2x squared's where I want it that's going to take dx over there but the e to the minus y goes down there now actually it's e to the negative power so when I put a negative power onto the bottom it actually becomes a positive power so I think this is the integral of e to the y dy equals the integral of 2x squared dx get your head around that e to the what minus y when I move it onto the bottom is 1 over e to the minus y which is really e to the y so anyway I'm integrating e to the y and the great thing about e is they stay the same 2x squared well that becomes 2x cubed over 3 plus a constant and I now want to move the e on the other side don't get confused it's not quite like the last one this so it becomes a log natural log of 2x cubed over 3 plus a constant so that's my equation um, well not quite I know that x is 0 and y is 0 so let's sub those in uh, that will give me my particular solution rather than this horrible plus c thing so anyway sub it in what naught equals the log of uh, well that's two times naught it's all it basically that disappears and it? it's the log of c so move the c on the the log back onto the other side that's e of naught equals c and e of any e to the naught is one now you might prefer that actually it might be better if I had put it into this equation instead, I I, as I was doing that, I wasn't liking it. So I didn't have to put it into this equation. I could have put it into this equation here instead. If I'd done that, it would have straight away said e to the 0 equals 2 to the x cubed. That's 2 times that's 0 plus c. You can see c would have been e to the 0, which is 1. So either way, you end up with c equal to 1. And now I know that, of course, it's y equals, now I can put it in here the log of 2x cubed over 3 plus, was it 1? And that's exactly what the answer is here I've got. Um, this is an exam question. Uh, it starts off straight away. We've got partial fractions to do, first of all. So, OK, let's do the partial fractions. Um, don't particularly like it. I'm going to have to... Now, notice this is a repeated fact on the bottom. So I've got to write that equal to a over the x plus 1 squared plus b over, because it's repeated, I've got it down to x plus 1, the squared bit and the not squared bit, plus c over the x plus 4. And when I multiply that out, effectively I get 16 plus the 5x minus the 2x squared. And that is equivalent to, that should be equivalent to, now, this is all over this it will going to be, become all over this this is presently over just the x plus one squared so it's got to be a lots of x plus four this one's got to gain an x plus one and gain an x plus four so this is b lots of x plus one x plus four and the c has got he's got an x plus four on the bottom but it needs an x plus one squared c lots of x plus one squared so I set x equals to a few numbers when x equals, let's just do minus 4. When x is minus 4, that goes, that goes. The only thing left is that. Now what's the left hand side give me? Gives me 16. I'll just do this on the calculator. I don't want to make a dark mistake so much. Well, uh, menu 1. 16 plus 5 times negative 4 minus 2 times negative 4 squared. I get minus 36 on the left hand side. So the right hand side gives me a nice number. So I said that goes, that goes. So I get that. So it's minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Square is 9c. And I think therefore c is equal to minus 4 because 36 divided by 9. So I've got my c. Uh, set x equal to a different number, obviously minus 1. And if I put it into there, I get 16 minus 5 minus 2 times minus 1 squared. I reckon minus 2 
So that gives me 9. Um, what does it give me? Um, when C, x is minus 1, that goes, that goes. This is the only thing left. That's equal to 3a. Equals minus 1 plus 4. So therefore, a equals 3. So that's giving me 2. And I think we've said try x equals naught when you get to the point where you run out of numbers to put in. So if I put naught in, I reckon I get 16 on the left. I get 5x. What's 5x going to give me? Um, what am I doing? 16. Oh yeah, that I went blank there. So 16 equals. And I put naught into this side. Now I get 4a. Um, that's 1 times 4, which is 4b. And that is 0 times 1, that's 1 squared, which is c. Now, of course, I know what a is now. a is 3, so that's 12. 16 is 12. And know c is minus 4. And I've got this 4b in the middle. So that's 8. When I do that, move it over, I get 8 equal to 4b, or b equals 2. Gosh, I got there in the end. So um, eventually, eventually, I'm just going to uh, erase a little bit here. I can now say that's at ABC, and I reckon it now says A was um, 3, B is 2, and this is minus 4. So notice now what it wants me to do. It says dy by dx, this lot, that looks exactly the same as that, but the A, well, apart from it's got a Y at the end. So I'm going to say this therefore is dy. I'm going to move the y down here. So notice the y goes down there and the dx switches places. So 1 over y dy is the all this lot. Oh, hang on a bit. Of course, I really I know what this is now. Um, I'll write it, but um, I'm hoping not to write it for long. All over x plus 1 squared x plus 4. And of course, the dx moves over, and when I get to that stage, I integrate both sides. Great thing about this, that I can do, log y. But the integral, all, integral of all of that looks horrible, until you remember a bit. I know what that is now. It's really the integral of 3 over x plus 1 squared, plus 2 over x plus 1, minus 4 over x plus 4. Notice where I wrote the minus at just at the front, dx. Um, integrate this, then log y I think becomes, well, log y stays, I suppose we've already done that bit. This becomes, well this is um, actually like a u equals x plus 1 all squared job. Um, or, or in fact I won't write that, I'll write this as the integral of 3, it would be better like this, x plus 1 to the minus 2. So if I integrate that, do you remember what you do when it's got these, you go, you add a power, so it's 3 lots of x plus 1 to the minus 1 over the minus 1 and also over the number of x's which happens to be that that's fine this is plus 2 log x plus 1 minus 4 log of x plus 4 um, plus uh, a constant I suppose we've still got to get a constant out of this now I can tidy this up a bit this becomes log y this is uh, minus 3 over x plus 1. It looks a bit better like that. This is, well the 2 moves over and becomes a power. So plus the log. And also I can move the 4 like that as well. I'm just thinking to myself, I can write this as log of x plus 1 squared over x plus 4 to the 4. Not sure if that's better or worse. I'll be honest, I think it's worse. Plus a constant. Um, now, it says find uh, y equals 1 over 256. So this is our way of finding when x is 0. So this is our way of finding it. Now I'll just go. Uh, well, I just realise I'm more or less out of time. So what I'll say is look, we've got 10 seconds left. I want you to try to get me the answer. And of course, what you're doing is your um, it says find the exact value of y when x is 2. So that's a couple of jobs to do. You've got to find c and then at last substitution. And we'll have a look at this in class. Just like.